Hi guys, picked up a few vapes in the street again. I uh, don't see very many. This is uh, probably two or three weeks worth of collection. So yeah, not very many at all. I do know, well, I've taken these apart in the past. So there are teardown videos of the Hayati Pro Ultra. Did that a while back. And this one is the IVG 2400. Got two of them. Uh, only reason I'm showing them to you at the moment is I will take them apart. The battery is in there. It's about that big. And it did occur to me, um, these little torches have three AAA batteries in them. So four and a half volts in theory. The size of that is about the same as the size of the battery in there. I'm thinking of 3D printing an adapter so I can put the LiPo battery in the adapter with a suitable connector on it so we can actually charge it easily. And then use that to power one of these. LiPo battery, 3.7 volts nominal voltage, 4.3 freshly charged. I think you'll find it will actually light those up with no trouble whatsoever. So. Um, might give that a try. I just knocked the camera then. Sorry about that. So yeah, that's the next little project. But I won't bother demonstrating tearing them down. I've done videos of them. What I will do is get the battery out, measure it, 3D print a suitable adapter with some nickel plates on either end. Need a nickel plate on that end, nickel plate on that end. That's the on off, on off button in there. It connects that bit to the outer casing, and then the outer casing goes down there. And in there, you can might be able to see the LED array. So that's part of the circuit, the casing. Yeah. So that's the project. As promised, I didn't waste time showing you the tear down of those vapes but I was surprised the batteries in the what was it IVG 2400 although they'll just about fit they're too close a fit for what I actually want to do because um, what I'd have to do with these would be a, put a Oh, it could still be done, but I'd have to put a, a plate on the end there and a plate on the end there. But I don't think I'd have enough room to run a separate wire out for the recharging. So if I use the battery out of the Hayati, whatever it was, Hayati Ultra, that's quite a bit smaller. That will fit in there with no trouble. So I can make a, a 3D printed frame like that one to fit that inside. And if I reach over here, put a connector like that on it, so I can plug that into my LiPo charger. So I've 3D printed little um, case for this LiPo battery to fit into, which is a 17350, so 17 millimeters diameter, 35 millimeters long. Uh, we've still got the bits of foam on the end of it where it was in the vape. That will fit in there. I've got some nickel plates here given to me by my friend Mike Flight. So I will fold them to go round the end to make the uh, battery connections. Solder them onto the tags in here. These tags.
and fold it up together so we should be able to pop it in there oh nearly forgot and also cut this one up so it will sit in there so it can all go in together and then when we want to charge it we can just pop that out and plug it into my lipo charger my fingers will be in the way when i'm soldering it but i'll just demonstrate i've arranged for these strips to slide through and then i'll solder this on there and then push it down in and then bend the remains of the strip round the top and push it back through that slot there just to hold it in place and as i say solder that on at the same time right soldered onto the tags so i can pull these down through like that and bend them over push them through like that and i can probably solder this fella onto this end what we don't want to do is touch those two together at the moment because that will be live so soldered on there soldered on there that will tuck inside out the way i'll now put a bit of tape over there just to make sure that can't pop up and short against the case or you could always hot glue it i suppose that would do the same thing yeah i think hot glue will be neat so tuck that in there well, there we go. Worker. And there we are on my lipo charger. Yeah, we'll let it charge up, but obviously it works anyway. On the subject of charging this, I've taken the easy option easiest for me because i've got a lipo charger that takes that sort of connector then doing it this way with that plug hanging loose is easy if you don't have a lipo charger you need some sort of regulated power supply to charge it this is a typical example you can buy them cheap on ebay uh, or other electronic suppliers online that's the bit you need they come in a strip of five or ten or whatever because that's the easy way for them to assemble them before we go into the detail i'll just show you some examples that's one i've done some time ago it's got one of those boards on on it so we've got the lipos battery goes to the tags on there plug a usb supply in there that charges that up and then that plugs into whatever you want to power from the battery uh, that's another one that's a lithium ion battery that's just double-sided tape holding it in place so the battery is soldered directly to this board and then again that would plug into whatever you wanted to power from that battery so neither of those need a separate um lipo charger just an ordinary usb supply this one i don't know you might be able to squeeze it on board with a bit of redesign and possibly a slightly smaller battery and you might be able to get that within the available diameter alternatively you do what i've done there put one of these JST connectors on it. There are 
other connectors available. I just happen to like JST ones. That's a male. That's a female. So if we're going to charge this from here, then we need a female to go into the male. So we can plug that in. And then that will go on this board. In the middle there, you'll see B plus and B minus. That's for the battery. So you need this female soldered to those middle two tags. And then if you plug your USB supply in there, there's actually a little LED comes on to let you know when it's charged. I think it's uh, red to let you know it's charging, and then blue, I think, actually, to let you know it's charged. So that will be connected on there, that connected on there, and that replaces that LiPo charger that I've got. On that one, I've got this extra cable coming off to the outer two tags, where this actually says out, out plus, and out minus. Hang on, focus. Do it the right way up so you can actually see, and it goes out of focus. Yeah, there we go. Out plus and out minus, the outside tags. Those are the ones that would go to what if you're actually trying to power from your battery. Because the other... Uh, the other chips on there actually protect the battery. So if it's over discharge or overcharge, it actually cuts the supply. So that gives you protection on board as well. Doing this, we've got no protection to the battery. So it could over discharge, which could cause a problem. They don't catch on fire when they over discharge. They catch on fire when they're overcharged or short circuited. Over discharge means it's got no power in it. Um, so you could over discharge it. That means you might not be able to recharge it. It may say, I've had enough and I won't recharge anymore. So in this situation, I don't think there's going to be a problem. What will happen is worst case scenario, it will eventually go out and you might not be able to recharge it because it's gone too flat. I don't think that will happen, but that's the potential. Uh, right, I think that's covered it. So they are available online. If I can remember what they're called, I'll put a note in the video description. So thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave us a comment so I know I'm doing, and somewhere up here there'll be some links to related playlists, thanks again.